<laughs> okay, welcome everybody um, to episode, um, let's see what season are we, Ep uh, season six. Um, we are episode um, Tuesday, March 2nd. Um, <laughs> Brian, you are our, our incredible host tonight. So, um, but before we start that, um, Vince, do you have any EPCO news you'd like to uh, bring up? Uh, yes, I do. Um, let's see, our uh, exhibition with uh, Oakland School of the Arts, students from Oakland School of the Arts is opening this Saturday at Panorama Framing cool. uh, here in Oakland. Um, and it's at one o'clock, one to four? Yeah, one to four. One to four. Um, to be COVID safe, there'll be limited number of people allowed at any one time. Uh, but it will be up for two months. And so available to see by appointment. We are super excited and very proud of this show. Uh, all the students went through a portfolio review process, uh, working with Beatrice and Brooks and myself uh, to refine their images over uh, four sessions resulting in this show. It's terrific. They came up with the theme themselves. The theme is the future. Uh, and then um, and then it'll be also online uh, what, uh, later this week. So, but if you have a chance to get over, uh, even if you can't make the opening, you can call Panorama and make an appointment and go see it. It's terrific. And uh, it'll be online on the EBCO site? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, after this week. Great. We're uh, gonna be sharing out posters and um, various promo uh, info starting tomorrow, I think. Cool. And then one more quick save the date is um, Neely's talk about Dorothea Lang on March 23rd. Cool. Uh, so two Tuesdays, two, 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 two Tuesdays from now. <laughs> uh, and that link is on the website. So Neely's going to kind of give us a, a virtual guided tour through the uh, Oakland Museum mm -hmm. of California's archive of her work and talk a little bit about Dorothea Lang, so. Um, three, really three, tu three Tuesdays, don't stress me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I just looked at it, I said, oh my God, is that spring break already? I've got a lot yeah. to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> yeah, and plenty of other really, really great mm -hmm. stuff coming up, uh, so stay tuned, but those are my announcements. Anita, anything to add? No, that was the, the main business uh, yeah. Oh, and the next photo walk uh, tie-in is coming up on Sunday. I don't know, Jenny, if you want to say anything about that. But yeah, the, the show and the various talks and the photo walk are on my mind. Yeah, um, it'll be our second virtual photo walk of the year, of the two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> All of the, year. the year. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and it's this Sunday um, at one o'clock for about an hour. Um, super chill. And the challenge is my block. Um, so not just Jenny's find, block. right, not just your physical <laughs> residential block or work block, it could be your creative block, it could be your um, other, I don't know, any kind of block, yoga block, <laughs> your building block. Um, anyway, so that's this Sunday, um, and uh, and then we'll probably, um, well, I think we'll try to come up with a challenge for the following. Um, uh, first Sunday, which will be April at that time. So anyway, last time was really fun. Super, super chill. Um, it's just like one or two pictures. It's not, it's very different from show and tell. Um, and anyway, if you haven't been, um, come on down. Um, and yeah, it, any photo medium is welcome for that. You don't have to shoot film. You don't, you know, you can do film, Polaroid, digital, whatever. Um, it's anything you want. Um, okay, handing it over to you, Brian. Oh, thank you. Uh, you mind if I share the screen? You should be able to. Is it not working? There nope. you go. Awesome. There we go. Yes. Cool. Uh, well, thank you uh, for all joining and um, uh, I know this is kind of like a deep subject, um, but it's something that I've been thinking a lot, especially uh, during this, you know, I'm, I, I hate saying, you know, this weird era, uh, but kind of thinking uh, a lot about when I've been taking pictures during this time, 
Um, it's to kind of be kind of as a document for myself to remember like what things looked like that were different and how am I going to explain this era to, you know, somebody in 20 years with my photographs. And I noticed that I was really trying to photograph at least, you know, when I'm out on my, uh, my daily government mandated bullshit walks that we all have to take, um, that, you know, I'm trying to photograph uh, at least something that I think uh, you wouldn't see two years ago and hopefully you won't see in three to four years. Um, and that got me thinking about how photos can explain humanity and can explain time and events and um, something that I've been really fascinated with since I heard about it, you know, probably like when I was 19, uh, are, is the Voyager record or, uh, uh, or the Golden record. Um, and for those of you who might not have heard this before, uh, basically in uh, the late 70s, NASA sent out uh, two probes out into space. And um, it's kind of rare that uh, what they did with these probes, because these probes are just, you know, our satellites is transmitting data back to us. Uh, but it's one of the few that are don't really have a destination. Um, they were supposed to go by certain planets, uh, but they just keep on at this point going out and out. It's basically like, it's literally um, like throwing a bottle into the ocean. Um, and of course, because it was the 70s and there was Carl Sagan involved with this and he can convince, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, scientists that, you know, maybe they should put some art on it. Um, they put on uh, onto the side uh, what's known as the Golden Record, um, which is a compilation of a bunch of different greetings, messages, um, most famously uh, songs. There's about uh, 50 different songs on there. Um, and uh, as well as actual images that are meant to explain to any ex extraterrestrial life that's out there how to um, uh, basically what humans are, what our civilization is like, and um, uh, kind of have this out as a way to explain us. Um, and of course, this was the 70s. And uh, you really, you know, it's not, uh, they weren't thinking that much about putting up the whole earth. It's pretty much Western things that they put on this disc. Uh, you know, most famously, they put uh, uh, lots of Beethoven and Bach and Mozart on there, along with uh, um, Chuck Berry uh, on there uh, and Blind Willie Johnson, um, who has a very fascinating story considering that they chose one of his songs to basically, uh, you know, represent all of us. Uh, but you really can't explain all of the human existence on what could fit on one vinyl record. Um, and they did send, you know, everybody talks about the music on it. Uh, the question I usually ask somebody on a first date is, you know, what songs would you put uh, on to the golden record? Uh, my answer has always been uh, Need Play uh, 5 uh, by Philip Glass. Um, and then if I'm allowed two, it would be Lou Reed Street Hassle on there. Um, so, you know, they did put images on there. They did put actual pictures um, and they're pretty much all to explain uh, us and explain how we eat and how we drink and how we reproduce. Um, they don't go into too graphic of a detail on that. Uh, but uh, this was actually the first image that shows up on the, uh, on the golden disc. You don't actually see it on the actual disc. Um, it is, it's turned into an analog format sound wave that can be converted into an image. Um, and there was instructions for aliens on there. Um, I tried to figure out today how you, how they actually did it. Um, and I was totally confused, uh, but we'll see in a second uh, how they, uh, what it actually looks like. Um, they did, uh, you know, most of the images are not anything you would consider art. They're instructional. Um, a lot of it is like 
pictures of math problems from a book or um, uh, there's one I love where uh, it's showing how humans consume things. Um, and so they have like one person looking at an ice cream cone, one person eat, you know, chewing something and one person drinking something. Uh, but they did, you know, at least put this Ansel Adams picture on um, the Tetons one, um, which this is the quality apparently that they put on. Um, I didn't go and grab the real picture. I just grabbed this off of the NASA website. Um, so I feel like Ansel Adams, I feel would be, or was probably a little miffed at this. Um, <laughs> that like, you know, come on, there's no tonal range and all of that. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, I'm just going to not play all of this just real fast, but this is actually a demonstration of how the images came in uh, on the actual um, the disc. And if you were to play it, you know, using instructions and then convert it into some analog form, it would come in three at a time. Uh, it's actually you would have pictures on both sides of your ear. The uh, golden record is in stereo. Um, so you could, uh, you would be getting two images at the same time, uh, two separate ones. Uh, and I'll, you know, I can send out that link if you're interested. Um, but as you can see, this is the one I was mentioning about, you know, how we eat. Um, <laughs> Um, and again, it's it's one of these things where I, you know, I think if we were to do it today, it would, you know, A, kind of be useless, you know, would we send out like a, a USB drive uh, to explain it? Uh, but I do still like the idea of having um, and uh, uh, trying to come up with a compilation of images that can represent humans, you know, at least to an extraterrestrial um uh, intelligence. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard about the, uh, the problem uh, that has come up where they want to mark out um, nuclear uh, uh, radioactive waste in, um, in, uh, for future generations, and they want to make sure that they can uh, mark uh, nuclear waste to tell people that it's harmful even if the people were not uh, were telling them is are not human are uh, some sort of alien race um how do we represent danger and don't go in here uh with um with symbols so that everything is totally uh explainable to anybody um so just a couple more of the images again sorry that they're low quality um apparently they are copyrighted so um, and most of them you would have to look up, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't find the, you know, the Ansel Adams one uh, uh, in a non-copyrighted form uh, that they actually used. Um, but, you know, I've thought about this for a long time and in grad school I encountered this project by Trevor Paglin where he's doing something very similar of uh, putting out a golden record uh, with images but the difference is, is that the Voyager record is meant to just go out and keep going. Um, we're going to lose contact with it. And I think 2030, maybe. Um, and multiple times they've said, oh, you know, the Voyager record has left the universe, uh, literally. Um, and then everybody goes like, well, not technically. And then they're like, OK, this time it's left <laughs> the universe. Um, um, but what the uh, artist Trevor Paglin did is he did, you know, created his own image of records, but he attached it to a satellite um, and to a satellite that would orbit, um, orbit uh, the world continuously. Um, and it wouldn't, in theory, unless something hits it, it's never gonna go off course. It's always gonna be orbiting around earth. Um, there are a lot of dead satellites out there that are just gonna continuously orbit forever and forever. Um, and that will outlast all, uh, us. So in uh, Trevor Paglin's mind, this record isn't to explain us so that one day we can uh, make contact with aliens because of course the human race is gonna live forever. 
but his was, well, if the human race does go extinct one day and aliens come by and find it, this will be at least some sort of clue for them. Um, and of course, this takes a much more arty approach to it. Um, I really love this book called The Last Pictures. That was a project. Um, those are all of the pictures over here. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting is that um, there are very few, few humans in this picture. Um, and that the humans that are, they, all, they usually have their back turned to us. We don't see that many faces. Um, and then we also see a lot of stuff that is um, uh, controversial or is, um, you know, depressing and sad. You can see that there are uh, uh, nuclear explosions and, uh, you know, people going hungry and captured animals and all kinds of stuff like that in here. Um, you know, we have a typhoon um, uh, from Japan in the earliest 20th century uh something uh you know the one happy picture in here um i feel is of uh, child refugees and orphan child refugees um experiencing a happy moment um but i don't know if that could be if understanding that uh these children have probably not had a great childhood can be sent off through these pictures you know, something as dark as, you know, an operating theater. Um, uh, you know, and something as confusing as, you know, this, which I had to actually go get the book and look up what it was, was it's the uh, American National Exhibition in the Moscow World's Fair uh, during the height of the Cold War. So trying to explain the benefits of capitalism to uh, Soviet Russia. You know, you get even even more scary ones like this. Um, and you know, when I had first heard of the Voyager record, um, something that I had heard from, or you know, heard some artists talking about, like oh, what I would put on, and is a thing of, you know, yes, we have to, we want to put a positive spin on humanity, and we want to. Uh, celebrate human achievement, but we can't get away with the fact that um, uh, man is an animal to man, and we do have to come with, deal with us that our uh, uh, much of our civilization is uh, about making other people's lives worse for our own benefit. Um, which is an incredibly dark thing to say, but, you know, for all of us, you know, who, who work, uh, you know, it's all about getting your money, uh, getting more money from somebody else than, um, uh, than they can get for to you. So with that in mind, I mined my archives to try to find images um, that I thought represented humanity. Uh, what I ended up finding um, is that uh, I was looking back to uh, a lot of pictures that were, you know, coming up on taken 10 years ago. Um, a lot of, none of these pictures or, or one or two maybe um, were part of a project. Most of them were uh, just kind of, I want to go out and take some photographs. Um, and for the most part, I tried to be um, an optimist about my images, um, but uh, I found it really interesting that the ones I was drawn to and sa immediately said, no, that one needs to be in there. And I picked out about a hundred um, were ones that were kind of capturing everyday moments. Um, a lot of this came from when I was still what I would call myself a street photographer um, and much more interested uh, in, in photographing people and interactions, you know, in a, in a candid method. Um, and again, like, you know, I took these when I was like 23, 
and was a total asshole um, and, you know, probably wouldn't take some of these pictures today. And I kind of gave up on anything of like how, you know, uh, I looked at it as much more of, of I'm taking these photos to like put them into the pot and the, you know, it's not me meant to represent everybody. I wouldn't, I would, you know, wouldn't say uh, that if we were to put these on an actual disc that these should be the 10 or 12 or whatever. Beautiful portrait, beautiful. Oh, thank you. I think that should definitely go on the disc. Do you think so? Or the drive? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to be confused when they see that. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah. I it mean, would look weird. They it look. Does. <laughs> it does, and and Are you know, <laughs> what that? Are those people? Exactly. <laughs> this one I put in just to fuck with them, like <laughs> you know. Like I had a whole idea of like, what's the most confusing images I could put in there just to like uh, uh, completely make it uh, screw everything up. And that one's good following the previous cause they're also white or yeah. something, you know. And it, it looks a really alive coming in from the side like that. It looks yeah. totally alive. The, that one, the T-Rex? Uh, the other one. Oh, the other one, oh, oh, the other one. yeah. Coming in. Yeah. Surprising us. Um, I don't know if anybody has passed by this on their way to uh, Palm Springs or uh, Joshua Tree. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite spots. Yeah. It really is. Um, have you been inside the actual museum? Well, yeah. I mean, I was going to say the tragedy is what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a uh, like uh, some guy originally built these two dinosaurs um, as a tourist attraction, and then when he retired, he sold it to like a. Uh, uh an evangelical church um who <laughs> who believed like the uh uh the world is only six thousand years old um and like noah the uh, the flood created the, the grand canyon and of course dinosaurs are real how do you explain the loch ness monster that's actually one of their uh their arguments for it one of the other tragedies is that the really awesome diner that was right there the, is now closed. Mm, it yeah. was the diner that was in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. yeah. Is the diner closed because of COVID or just permanent? Oh, it's been closed for longer than that. It closed probably seven, six years ago, something yeah. like that. It happened yeah. there, but not obviously yeah. not for a while. Yeah. Hey, Two um, years ago, I drove by and um, I, I think only the drive in sign was still there. And that's pretty yeah. much it. That's too bad. Yeah. I think that's still they they have like a, a Burger King I know um, yeah. you know well but, they built uh, that big mall there and then they made it super fancy oh did so. they okay oh, yeah. Yeah. I just it was it was a, uh, it's a it was a good bathroom stop what's it called uh, Cabazon Dinosaurs and um, it was the, the Cabazon Outlet Mall is what they built oh so, okay so if you go down uh, to see the dinosaurs do stop and shop for uh, you know some knockoff or not knockoff but discounted alexander mcqueen clothes because they have that at that mall it's very very chic <laughs> i just be uh, there there is um this one and the next one does have some um some dead uh dead animals so if you're squeamish look away for a couple of minutes and i figured i'd had to get you know, one thing explaining the life cycle in there. If you're really squeamish, look away from this one. 
That's sculptural. It really is. Um, this is the only one I, I took from a project. Um, and, um, you know, I, I've been photographing dead whales um, for a couple of years now. And um, they do look very sculptural, like up close. And, and it they almost look like, um, like giant melted tires that, you know, were done very sculptural thing but one of the things I notice every time I photograph one is they'll you know they'll be somewhat of a crowd usually but there's usually a lot of families with young kids out there um, which I find really interesting because you think oh you know you want to block that from from you know young kids eyes and I think like a lot of parents you know kind of take them out to kind of explain the you know the the circle of life to them um and it, you know, I'm like wondering, like, is it because you guys don't have a pet that, you know, will someday pass away? You know, you have to explain death with this stuff. Um. It, it is funny. Thinking what Martians would think of that. You're thinking of what? <laughs> what the Martians would think of that. I know, I know. And and one of the reasons I, I you know, chose this image is, um, you know, when I found this spot, uh, like I was going up the stairs to photograph the Delta, um, and I found this in, uh, underneath. And uh, one of the things that gets brought up about the Voyager record a lot is the fact that there's a song uh, by Blind Willie Johnson on there called Dark as the Night, Cold as the Ground. It's an old blues song. Um, and uh, according to him, it is a song uh, for those who are sleeping rough each night. That every, you know, every night, a lot of humans have to sleep outside in the cold and the rain. Um, uh, and, you know, it's something that we have to remember that future generation or that there's always somebody uh, who needs our existence um, and who we have failed uh, as, a, as a society to protect. Um, and it makes it even more interesting uh, when you find out that Blind Willie Johnson uh, uh, died uh, while sleeping uh, in the remnants of his burned out house uh, and with newspaper as a blanket, um, uh, you know, that you realize like how profound that statement uh, that everybody is, is sleeping, you know, every day somebody sleeps outside. Um, and, you know, I randomly kind of picked three where, you know, if I was to actually put together a picture, uh, a disc of famous pictures, uh, ones I would put in for contention, you know, I think, uh, you know, Migrant Mother, of course, you really can't argue with that, but, the, you know, the two others I would have, you know, just to emphasize to, hu to the Martians that we are a ridiculous spe uh, species is um, always forgetting a, or uh, the Roger Minnick um, photograph where I just always love that, you know, she's wearing a scarf of what she's looking at at her head, on her head. Um, yeah, this is definitely, you know, one of my favorite photographs. Um, and then you know, this one from Martin Parr, um, you know, this is the one Martin Parr picture I'll let into uh, uh, when I teach classes. Um, like this is the one I always use uh, just because like we are ridiculous and, and um, you know, we can be funny. Um, so that's what I have. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody wanted to comment or talk about any of those. Uh, we can always move on to the next speaker. 
totally up to you guys. Brian, can you flip back one? Yeah. This, the, yeah, this one? Yeah. I think an alien looking at this would get humanity in an instant. Like, I think this is at least Western civilization. Right. In that, you know, we're, we're so much about representation in, in all its forms. Like, we're constantly ex, um, uh, ab abstracting our surroundings and down to the very nature of human bodies you know humans are driven by our brains which is a complete abstraction you know the brain is in there it has no clue right does it can't doesn't know what's going on so it just relies on an abstraction of the world you know and this is you know that's it's you know abstraction on top of abstraction and i think because you've got you know roger minnick has here the image so the alien could see okay well oh, i get it i get it yeah that's the abstraction not to mention the 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 language is there another level of abstraction and you know she's got a layer or she's got a coat you know that's her an abstraction of herself i think that's this is all you need to send frankly just yeah might, they might not even know that there was a head underneath that like it could also be a confusing uh like do they i mean i i totally agree with you i yeah. think that's a great observation but like you don't even know that there's a head no in there <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's one of those things where uh like i i i definitely have gone through all of my photographs and, and marked the ones that have uh, people's back turned on it um, and put it into a special folder just because, you know, it's something I know I shouldn't do. I shouldn't photograph people from behind. You, uh, it's not going to make a very interesting po picture a lot of the times. Um, um, and it, it kind of is, you know, it's the same in the theater training I got where it's like never turn your back to the audience. Um, and I like, you know, with this, not only is, you know, the thing that is absolutely beautiful that everybody has to go here is um, slightly out of focus, uh, but we're also intentionally, you know, kind of making the, the image more technically uninteresting by having that person's back to us. Um, uh, and just having, you know, uh, um, you know, the, the, the fact that this scarf represents that, like how much we worship these natural areas i think is very interesting but also how much we commercialize them as well mm -hmm. um i think i think the um the jack the jacket is amazingly cozy there's something yeah. so cozy about it and it, and ex makes it extra human i think with the extra ripples and and um and uh, it, is, it is quite fascinating. And having the um, actual wall, you can see the wall there. And, and the fact that we are seeing her from behind, it gives us a stalker capability. And also we feel, I mean, I don't know, it makes us feel close to her. I mean, I think it's a her, but um, <laughs> um, it's funny um, that you're showing this right now because I just came across this image last night for the first time in a long time. And it was so satisfying. It's just, it's just great because the last time I was there, there were so many millions of people taking that shot they have to take. And so you can't help but take other people taking that shot. <laughs> it's just like these layers of, these extra layers of being there. And then the, yeah, it's it's pretty outrageous, the whole it thing. Is. It is, I mean, and it's, uh, it's something that I always feel is, is kind of frustrating to me uh, when we look at photographs where it's like every photograph has to be super serious and it has to be, you know, the ones we consider good are the black and white, you know, perfectly printed uh, or, you know, incredibly dark subject. Um, and what we're, with this, it, I mean, it's just, it's funny. And like, if you ask me, you know, like I kind of want to put a Weird Al song uh, on the Golden Record, <laughs> you know, just.
just to uh, to break up the uh, the the seriousness of it. Yeah, it's so good. Such a good one. <laughs> um, good choice. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I'll be asking NASA for you know. Ten trillion, uh, ten billion dollars. You know, hopefully we'll get the project off in a couple of years. I support you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, anybody have anybody else, or should we move on to the next participant? I just wanted to mention about this image. What I another thing I appreciate about it is all the elements that are brought into it to showcase the Earth to the external lives of the extraterrestrial, um, but with the mountainscapes being the earth, the waterfall shows the water, but also the winds pushing the waters and the clouds. Um, and then the human has the warmth aspect. I feel like they are the flame within. Right. Yeah. Really beautifully. Trying to explain yeah. that like, you know, not only, uh, I mean, there's, there's cultural things with, you know, having a, a babushka, but, um, but explaining also that it, you know, you have that element that I've never really noticed of falling water and wind uh, and bits of snow, but you also have like, she's telling us she needs to keep warm. Um, so we, we know, we assume it's cold. Yes, she's the warmth, I love it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, excellent. Excellent. Um, I have the sign, uh, the list here, Brian. Do you want me to? Yeah. Um, so Ronald um, is our next show. Stop the share. Well, I will be short. Uh, I only have two photos, and I'm not usually one who says a lot. So <laughs> I have two images that are sort of opposite, and. Uh, the first image, as I press this, okay. Like, oh, the. Okay, my first image is of uh, a musician uh, because I think uh, art is important and uh, that's something as humans, we need to have art, especially music, and especially jazz. So that's why I chose this photograph of James Carter, who's a well-known jazz musician, playing uh, an instrument known as the stretch. And uh, so that's, that's my one photo. And then for my next photo, because uh, we are a society that can be cruel. I chose this photo be and because you see this person sleeping in the doorway and that is this humanity be along with being, having art and people donating to the arts. We also do not donate to help people in many occasions. Uh, and so we have homeless, homelessness, uh, rampant homelessness in this country. And so these are my two images. Can I ask why you chose the um, musician specifically? I, I really like the photo, but it was it, or was it more about the photo than the musician? No, it's the musician and the photo. Actually, I like that photo a lot too. The movie can can the you flip back, flip back to that one, Ron? Please. Sure. Could you put it on um, full screen? Full screen, yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> I thought it was, uh, okay. Great, yeah. thank you. There you go, right Great. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely photo. Thank you. What is what is exactly the stretch? I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's an alto-like saxophone. Uh, it's not played much. The one musician that used to play it a lot I uh, was a musician by the name of Rasan Roland Kirk. Actually, okay. that was his instrument that uh, his family uh, loaned it to this club in San Jose named Stritch. And the instrument is a Stritch. 
Mm. And it's sort of like in the alto saxophone family. Us. I wonder sorry, is it easier to sing through the way Rasan did? Is it? Excuse me? I didn't hear the question. You know how Rasan Rasan would sing through it. I just wondered if I don't know if it was No, he 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 did not sing through it, but he 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 makes a lot of sound as he plays too. Uh with with uh with his mouthpiece and everything like that. So yeah. In a way sort of after Rasan in the same mode. Looking at this, you know, we know that um, he's playing music. We know that he's in a kind of a pleasurable state. And I think, you know, anyone on the planet would, would understand that. But, you know, I'm really interested in, in ancient history and archaeology. And, um, and there's some representations that, you know, you can look at artwork from 10,000 years ago, and it's comprehensible to a certain extent. It's always interesting when there's something that's not comprehensible, but it makes you want to look at this with different eyes and, and a, you know, future archeologist would wonder, you know, is this person, is this, you know, a religious uh, performance? Is this a medical procedure? Is this person in pain? Um, you know, what, you know, we would look at, at you know, an archeologist would try to find these clues about what, what is the significance? What's the experience? What is this telling us about the human experience? And we take it for kind of for granted that we know from the expression that, you know, that this is a, you know, a special experience. But then of course, hopefully the archeologist would have many photographs to look at and they would eventually figure out the commonalities of, you know, human pain and suffering versus joy. It's funny, the thing that I'm most struck about this and thinking about looking at this with fresh eyes, as you say, I'm really focused on the blurriness of the instrument at the bottom. And I think that's because I'm, I'm teaching a film class this semester. Um, and one of the thing, and it's, it's a survey course. So we start with, with cave paintings from 32,000 years ago. And the idea that those are the precursors to the moving image and the way that the um, um, flames from fires that the people would have had in caves flicker, it makes the animals look as if they're moving. And this reminds me of that. If I were that archaeologist who had entered that cave, um, what I would be seeing, and I'm really, I'm really fascinated by that blur of the instrument because it gives us a lot of information about what that individual is doing. You know, they're not just standing there. There's motion. There's there's emotion. There's something going on more in this image than just a static pose or the like the foot coming out from the doorway of your other photo, Ron, where that person appears almost lifeless. This one has a lot more going on. Um, that's the part I like about this. Yeah, and like the thing I definitely see of this is is not only the movement, but that um, there there seems to be like he's in some sort of trance, and you know, like uh, it, it's one of those things of for those of you who who you know have ever had any sort of like religious deep moment um and then also maybe have like a movement you know connecting with music it just seems so familiar uh mm -hmm. on both ends and then yeah i mean it, it's it's an emotion and a sense of mind that i don't think is fully describable just with words um yeah it reminded me of the when you say religion it reminded me of the um the Sufis, you know, often when you see the images of the Sufis when they're in that trance and they're spinning around, um, you you almost never see a photo where the motion is stopped. It's always where their robes are flowing around, their arms are blurred to indicate that motion. And and I can absolutely see an archaeologist seeing this and thinking, is this perhaps religious in some way? I hadn't thought about that. I mean, it, it would, it definitely is. And, you know, it would be especially interesting if they had this picture and then, uh, you know, a picture of, uh, 
uh, an observant Jew blowing a shofar or um, or a gospel choir or any sort of any other thing um, involving any sort of musical instrument. And his eyes are so beautiful. I mean, and you know, yeah, that's what really, and you've, you've caught the glow and then you can feel how, you can feel the, yeah, I don't know, you can just feel that, that elation through his eyes being closed. Well, that's one of, one of my aim when I photograph jazz musicians to capture that mood that they're in, their feeling and their emotion and, Sometimes I succeed and sometimes I don't. And in this case, I, I did. Yeah. Well, raised another question for me, which uh, again, looking at this as you know, an alien, um, <laughs> would, <laughs> would the, the alien think about this as a work of art? Because to our eyes, this is so consciously a sculpted, crafted image so obviously a crafted image you know all the you know the, the lighting that is black and white the moment that's caught you know the, the use of detail and fall off we all know how much craft goes into this image now our alien archaeologist with you know 15 eyes and 12 arms <laughs> would they talk about the artist here the same way like we talk about the nameless artists of, you know, of, you know, like classical Greece, um, that, you know, those works that could be tracked to specific artists, even though they're unsigned. Well, how does, how does he eat if that is connected to his mouth like that? Does it just suck it up? Like, if that's an appendage, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be utterly confusing. You know, it's something I hadn't thought about is, um, you know, how many how many early photographs uh, do we look at that that says artist unknown underneath it? Um, you know, like, do you put? I don't know if they put it on the Voyager uh, record of do they put who was the photographer? Mm. Not enough. Okay, I guess that's my time. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ronald. Um, so next person up is Ashley Castro. Hi, everybody. I may share my screen. Um, I haven't done a lot of Zooming, so excuse me. We're here to help. Thank you. All right, I've got them open in preview, so I'll full screen that once I get there. Start share, sounds promising. Wonderful. Ooh, can you see pictures? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great, I wanted to start here. <laughs> Go full screen. Is it full screen for you guys? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Green button. Green button. Uh, for the. Or go to view. Or there. All the way down. All the way down. Oh, bottom. Full screen. Yay. Oh no, is there something open? <laughs> Stupid thing. You should be able to hit escape. Yeah, got that out of there. Now view. Full screen. There we go. Okay. So I took this photograph of my friend uh, about a month and a half before she had her baby, Remy. Um, wanted to show humanity in creative form, literally creating another human. Is it going to allow me to change everything? There we go. And then on this image here, I wanted, I really wanted to bring in the elements to the aliens. Um, 
to help them understand how the earth functions. See the air um, and then the fire that goes into the hot air balloons and the reflections of the water and the earth. And the people on the bottom are, are very hard to see, but their backs are turned uh, to the camera. Also, I was thinking a lot about that and making people more mysterious as figments. Do you want us to uh, comment on them as we go or? Oh, yeah, I want, I didn't want, I wanted to create space for that. I just didn't know. Let's go back here. Um, what might be a good idea, uh, if, you, if, if you're opposed, uh, please let me know. But um, maybe just run through them all so we, you know, kind of. Yeah, I have about eight. So let's, let's do Perfect. it. Perfect. And then we'll, we can go back and discuss them. Okay, great. So yes, the hot air balloons, the prairie. This is a horse and wanted to showcase some emotion as well. Um, and background on this horse, uh, this moment was actually from when a horse smelled my bag full of cannabis and, and it like made this laughing expression. So I, I think this horse likes to dabble in cannabis. It, it's a cool horse. It's, it's a funny horse. Um, and this one here is from the Maker Fair. And showcasing all ages, diversity, as much as possible. Okay, and then I have more on this other gallery here. Oh, sorry, my desktop is a mess little bit of an art maniac right now. Okay, this one here is musicians as well. Uh, I think there's some joy and some pain in this photo. A little bit of everything. And this photo is actually from Burning Man. Uh, two years ago. Um, I want to show the aliens that we know how to be spacey too. We're just as weird as they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can bring weirdness down to earth too. Yeah, and that, that's uh, all the, oh wait, actually, no, that's not. Hold on a second. This is just only showing there. And then this one is um, from Crater Lake of a bird visiting somebody. It's shot on Lomo purple, so it looks super psychedelic and weird. Um, so aliens might think we have purple trees. That the, I, I, on them. I think the aliens a... might be confused what's it, all the different, um, like the, um, the hot air balloons. I think they might think those are animals too. <laughs> they might be very confused about Earth based on some of these snippets. They might and think we fly, which we kind of do, but not very far. Or I, I, I like how this kind of implies a connection that, you know, we ourselves don't really understand. We don't really understand how we, um, connect or communicate with wild animals but there this seems to be communication between the two but it's a communication we ourselves don't understand very well but in, you know an alien might say oh you know that's they're negotiating you know a lease agreement for the summer for the summer or something you know <laughs> you may stay here yeah <laughs> uh well, there's that old joke about like if aliens came down and saw us picking up the poop of dogs, like they would be mm -hmm. like, oh, the dogs are in control. Like, you know, the humans feed them and pick up their poop and house them. But uh, so obviously, you know, dogs run the run this planet. 
<laughs> yes, uh, animals definitely could frame things in various ways based on how we interact with them. And I'm trying to get out of this one. I had another one that I thought was in this queue, excuse me. Let's go to preview again. This is the last one. The tree. And also teaching. He's demonstrating. You know, I'm curious, would they understand why we're cutting up that animal? Right. Uh, Will they think we're feeding? Yeah, you know, or, or are we just sadists? Um, you know, uh, because like in, you know, doing some research, the thing I, I kind of never found is that, you know, we, I don't think it is anybody has explained that we kill other animals so that we can survive. And not only do we kill them, but we raise them uh, specifically to be eaten. Um, you know, there's a lot of commentary on killing of other humans, but not that much on uh, killing of other living things. And it's it's not clear that this, you know, it's a, their expression is their, you know, they're concentrating. So it's not really an emotional situation um, for the for the humans involved, anyways. Um, you know, their expressions are interest and concentration, thoughtful, rational, and, and um, but it's, it's, yeah, very, very far away from an emotional experience where, you know, where we, um, if, you, if this was a photograph of a, um, like a, a cockfight or something like that, like an actual, like, you know, animal violence, the expressions on the humans involved would be very different from what we see here. Um, but uh, I think this is a terrific picture. It's, it says a lot, but, but again, because their expressions are so calm and rational, it kind of invites us to get in and try to explore it and discover it and find out what our own emotions are. We're not just given the emotions. It's wonderful yeah. to do that. Yeah, it, it's definitely something where, you know, uh, it took me a long time to, to realize that um, not everybody is as comfortable as at looking at meat and looking at, you know, uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, because for me, it's just like, yeah, this is, that's a steak, that's from a cow, you know, uh, I don't, but I don't think of it as a living thing, but I think a lot of people see it as, oh, that's something that used to be living. Um, this is like one of the few where I can, I can say, this definitely shows um, the process, but isn't overly gross, at least on-, on <laughs> Too bloody. <spot. laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I spent a lot of time at the butcher shop. It's not a, the most glamorous place, but I've made a lot of very interesting photographs in the process, and I'm grateful yeah. to have gotten to hang out this there. Is, this is making me thinking think that a interesting writing project would be to write from the point of view of an alien seeing some of these images. Or mm -hmm. just, at first, I was thinking like, oh, it'd be a great writing prompt period, but I think we would all kind of bring to it. We'd be like, a man is cutting a piece of meat. It's a cow. But if you don't know what, if you come into it cold, if you write from the point of view of something that has no idea what's going on that would could be interesting but I mean I had to step away for sex so I apologize if this is already mentioned but how would you know without being intimately involved with this that that was a separate animal like this could be right a person yeah. as well so mm -hmm. yeah another um question that you know human archaeologists often ask when they come across an unusual situation is they often assume like, oh, it's a religious ceremony because mm -hmm. they cannot, they can't understand what the hell's going on. So it must be a religious ceremony. And again, this could be, you know, the butcher's wearing a special hat. Mm -hmm. They're all wearing 
a special outfit. They're obviously in a special room. And I was thinking that and I thought, actually, in some cultures, butchering animals is a religious ceremony. You know, in Eastern Europe, there's the tradition of the, um, the ritual slaughterer in, you know, Jewish uh, villages that there would be a priest who his job was to slaughter the animals and it was a religious ceremony. And then of course, again, going back to classical times when, you know, butchering and serving up meat was generally part of a religious ceremony. And so, yeah, it doesn't necessarily one or the other. Well, in some ways, like every single one of these photographs could be of a religious ceremony. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'm I'm thinking, uh, and this is just something that I've I've had in my mind the last couple of months, but of the um, the hot air balloon one. Like you, I went hot air ballooning uh, once when I was like eight. My uncle took me, and um, and looking back at that, I was just like, why wasn't I fucking terrified? up there because a hot air balloon is well you you put some hot air up into this giant balloon that's carrying you you know thousands of feet up in the air um and then you just land wherever because like there's no controls on it there you can go up and down but you have nothing no control side to side (laughs) um like getting into a hot air balloon just feels like such a, a a leaf of faith in science and uh, understanding our our world that we can we can control it to, you know, be able to uh, to do this kind of very silly thing of, of going up into a balloon and eventually coming down somewhere in a cow pasture. Yeah, I wonder what aliens would think of that. <laughs> You know, especially if they were intelligent ones who had like mastered flight a little, uh, you know, I'm assuming much better than we have uh, Mm -hmm. if we're meeting them. Yeah, there's so much lack of control when you're in a hot air balloon and I really appreciate you bringing that up because it shows how much humanity trusts in the elements and the earth. Uh, A lot of things can happen out there hot air balloon and we risk our lives for some moments of joy and bliss that are living on the edge we want to fly we want to be like birds Mm -hmm. thank you so much guys for bringing up these discussions by the way this is really cool yeah does uh does anybody have anything else actually i really love these these images um thank uh, you you and I went to uh, to did our undergrad together, um, and I, I'm just so happy to see you know see these images and, and see that you're you're still photographing. Thank you. It's that? This image here at the um, Big Summit Prairie in Oregon during the Oregon Eclipse Festival. Oh. Yeah, and, and there's some festy peeps in the corner. Right? Oh, my, our undergrad. Um, that was at San Francisco State University. Uh, I met Brian because he was a photo assistant in my photo two class. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So uh, with Matt Kennedy and Louis Soto and yeah, it was some good times in the dark yeah. room. <laughs> and yeah, it's been a interesting collecting these images because, like you said, it's like an archive of snippets over our lifespan rather than it being like project-based. It's so much so just memories that stick out as far as uh, big moments in life. And it's nice how they connect together. Yeah, like seeing how everybody's work flows, if I wanna put them all in a capsule and send them out. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I will uh, exit the screen share and we can move on. And then the next up is Nicole White. Hey. Hey, let us actually, Ashley, you just brought up a good question. 
how many images can we send up? Was there a limit? Is there a limit? Good question. Um, so, I mean, I, I believe that we can send up an infinite amount, like we'll just get a bigger uh, uh, thumb drive. Um, we and, need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And listen, we might have to like send some low res images. You know, they may not be good enough to print from, but you know, they're good enough for web. Um, Martians don't print. <laughs> what? We don't know that. Yeah, know. come on. And I really like to call them Martians too. Yeah, come on. You know, calling it Martian, that's a little like problematic. I mean, not all extraterrestrial life comes from Mars. It's like calling, no. you know, everybody. We don't know that. It's yeah. the Looney Tune and me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, my belief is, is we should constantly be sending them images. And, you know, of course, they're probably like a race that can, uh, you know, like read all of the internet in one second kind of thing. Um, so I don't think there should be a limit, but you know, back then when they when they did the Voyager record, I think it was 150 oh, wow. total that they could do. But then again, that was by converting it to analog uh, sound mm -hmm. and, and burning it on a, a, a vinyl record that was dipped in gold. It is, I mean, it's also just in, fascinating. They had like a good, hundred song list and most of them are like concertos and uh, um, uh, religious songs and stuff like that so it is really interesting knowing how long a vinyl record can go on for where it's like 20 minutes um, versus well, who, you know, who is average. making choices uh, that's a really good question um, it was Carl Sagan led it um, and uh, there's actually like a very beautiful story that yeah. is um uh he fell in love with his wife while on um uh on uh the project um, weren't they both married and they fell in love with each other i don't know if they were married but they 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 said like apparently it was like one of those things where they just decided like they had never gone on a date or anything like that um they just both realized at the same time like hey we're in love with each other and like just called up and were like we should get married um and, a great and story. The, I've heard it yeah. a couple times. Yeah. Um, Radio Lab uh, uh, yes. did a, a beautiful project. Yeah. Um, uh, talks about it and it uh, interviews uh, the wife. And again, I'm sorry that I, I'm not remembering her name um, at the moment, but um, uh, she actually sent an hour of brainwave. She had her brain hooked up to uh, electro stuff and they measured her brain waves apparently while she was thinking of how much she was in love with her husband um and they transcribed that onto onto the record um uh from the research i did there was like a bunch of nasa people saying like you can't send this there was a big controversy over sending um a drawing of humans naked they sent a drawing of the outline of a male and a female but originally they tried to have them, you know, naked, like you would just see any human. Um, and that was nixed. Um, and apparently also they tried to get the Beatles, Here Come the Sun on it. And the Beatles were uh, for it and they really wanted to push it because they knew Carl Sagan, uh, but uh, BMI wouldn't let the song be on it due to copyright. Um, and there, there actually are copyright issues you know from selling that record mm. um, that's crazy uh, yeah but again it, it was it was a lot of white dudes who came up with what to put on like a lot of white dudes who also hated russians and all of eastern europe i feel and most of asia and definitely africa um so they were putting that much on there from from that side I so this was Imagine if all of us, excuse me, we had to choose just 150 images from our archives. Right. Just, you know, after everything that we've been doing, just, you know, collectively or separately. Right. You know, and, and then one, it's why one of those things where I don't think it's ever totally possible to, um, to make perfect encapsulation of humanity because 
you know, my understanding of the world is completely different than 99.9% of the rest of them. Like we're not even going to be close. So how do we encapsulate, you know, all of, uh, all of us onto a single record? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like why I like this challenge a bit. And how do you translate humor to uh, Martians or aliens? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I would definitely want to put, like, uh, if this was a time capsule, I would want to put a Marx Brothers movie in there. Like, you know, aliens should really see the Marx Brothers. <laughs> but this was, like, a predominantly American endeavor, correct? Yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody... Uh, who wasn't at least uh, had some connections to, you know, get access at NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think there were some, uh, some folks from other Western nations, but, you know, it was still the Cold War, so nothing from the Second World. Um, and it was know, not kind the of, International Space Station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was, there was no attempt. I mean, they might as well have just said, uh, this is the, um, you know, Amer this is what America is, um, mm -hmm. except they, you know, they gave some, you know, uh, Chinese and uh, uh, Asian and, and um, uh, African, uh, you know, kind of shout outs. But yeah, it was, it was definitely, and I think this was also was the year of the bicentennial as well. So there was a lot of jingoism in the air. Um, I just want to interject here. It's almost 20 after 8. We usually go till 8.30. We can go longer, um, but we do have three more folks showing, so. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not realize that. <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 I Everyone gets two minutes each. It's okay. <laughs> it's like, I think it's, well, it has been a unique theme, and yeah. I think we can continue. If you want to drop off, you can. Um, I think 10 minutes for three people isn't, you know, we, you know, I think people should feel, feel, you know, free to do whatever they need to do uh, in terms of leaving. <laughs> uh, do we want to maybe do, do the three, um, uh, you know, kind of quickly. So if people do need to leave, they can still see everybody's work. Um, and then we can kind of circle around for folks who are okay staying let's or? just continue on i think okay. switching back and forth is going to take up a lot of time okay yeah i can like just blast right through this <laughs> well i think it's good to like show them and you know and then we can go back to them you know what i mean mm -hmm. okay okay right. so I'm next. i mean i only have two so mine won't be you know I may have made a folder that has 30 images in it. So it's I'll, the same just, thing. I'll just try to not. <laughs> it's going to be so good. All right. All right. Um, I guess we'll end at 11. <laughs> yeah, that will work. No, OK, I have an idea. So basically, I couldn't decide. I didn't know if it felt appropriate to show um, a body of work that was specifically my work, or if it felt more appropriate to show a thing that I've been collecting that feels more universal. And so I think I'm going to go that route. I think I'm going to go that route. And then if, you know, if there's time later, I can show the other stuff, but this is, this is, I think, appropriate. So um, one thing I did want to mention really briefly, um, when you wrote this uh, prompt for this this weird sort of collection of images. Um, I thought of uh, Family of Man and the last image in Family of Man that got omitted from Family of Man is the atomic bomb explosion. And um, I was thinking here, I'm just gonna share my whole screen if that's cool. Walk um, and walk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think you guys can probably see everything over there now. Are you seeing a t an atomic bomb? Yeah. 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 And also your grid. What's that? And your grid behind. 
that's fine. That's good. Perfect. So um, I was thinking about a different photograph of an atomic bomb explosion. Um, one that maybe also references like other structural forms on like a microscopic level versus like a mon giant level. Um, and so these Edgerton photographs are something that I encountered when I worked um, at a museum in Chicago and had never seen before. And they um, were really particularly powerful, not, and that was not a pun. And they, they look were, like Martians. And they kind of do. If you like look for them online, there's a whole series of them. Um, but they are, they are really just visually, I think, um, they visually sort of speak to the power that we had harnessed at that point in time, but also um, they allude to a lot of other components um, within nature on earth. So anyways, all right. Um, I'm gonna just show you one chunk of photographs that are not mine. So there, and Jenny, you've seen some of these, if not all of these before, yay. Um, so these are really kind of terrible scans. I'm just trying to scan these right now so that I can like organize them. But um, I've spent, I don't know, a while, several years collecting vernacular photographs. And I was thinking, okay, if I was gonna put images on this, this disc, I would want images that maybe represented the things that were part of everyday experience. So family and the day-to-day -day activities of life. And so um, I pulled together some that I thought might be useful. And I'm just gonna go through them quickly, okay? You guys can stop me. And I'll talk over them because I should also say they are mostly 20th century photographs. That's where like my collecting brain is. Um, I've been meaning to introduce some newer things and I just haven't, I just haven't. So I'll get there. And also I think as people print fewer and fewer images, it's harder and harder for me to add more contemporary stuff. So that's kind of been a weird thing. Um, so I guess it kind of spans the, the printed image age. And there's my dinosaur. I was going to say, nice dino. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so, I don't know. I like, I buy other people's photographs by like the bushel. <laughs> and, um, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them or why. Um, they are predominantly of the United States because that's where I'm buying them for the most part. And I usually, I buy them in person. I don't buy them um, online or anything like that. Where do you buy these? Um, so I actually, let me move that over there. I am actually bought um, a ton of these when I lived in Kentucky. Um, there was just a lot of stuff out there that was cheap <laughs> and in bulk and great. And so I took advantage of it while I lived there. Um, but I get them at like um, thrift stores. I get them at estate sales. I get them at um, San Francisco has a, what is it called? Like an ephemera sale. Crap. Yeah. 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 I love their slides. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's not as affordable as Kentucky, but it's still a good place to find some stuff. Um, and so, and this one, this, I think this is the only one that's a tin type that I have in there. So slightly older, but just like everyday weirdness and infrastructure. Like I'm super personally interested in infrastructure and like the shaping of topography according to infrastructure. So I like photographs like this and speaks to what we could construct as humans. So I don't know, like some of them are funny. Some of them are serious. Like 
This is a cracker eating contest, um, which actually sounds horrible. <laughs> Isn't there like, that game of like, how many saltines can you fit in your mouth or something like that? Yeah, that's exactly, yes. And whistle. Like, and whistle. Is there also a, a double meaning to the- <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> see it. Like people eat crackers. <laughs> 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 no i just like <sighs> that's so bizarre it's so bizarre um this is one of the exceptions this is obviously not in the united states and uh colleen i know you're here somewhere you can tell me exactly the date of this image because i did look it up and i confirmed um that it is the launch of, is it Apollo 13, I think, I believe? <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> wow, that's a great picture. I have I have a couple of them and it's just cars parked on what looks to be some sort of, not necessarily a highway, but a multi-lane road, all staring off in one direction. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And then Colleen was like, it's April, 1970. <laughs> 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 that looks like, and I was like, Wow, great, thank you. So, and this one is a cyanotype. It's a name. And that's the last one, I think, in that group. Um, Nicole, but I'm sorry, could you go back to the Apollo 13? Yeah. So with my alien archeologist hat on, I'm gonna say, well, obviously the photographer thought that these, you know, these cars in the foreground, very, very important. Very, very important because he took the trouble to get up close to them, took this very careful picture, and incidentally happened to catch a you know a rocket tapping to take off. That's obviously a day to day event that was not very important. <laughs> or they're saying those animals are very tame, and the <laughs> person got very close and look, they can even sit on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's something I think, I don't know, like it's, I wanted to think about all of the things that we encounter regularly in our lives, like, like the ocean, like our homes, like weather, um, but then also like technology. So automobiles might be part of that. Infrastructure is part of that. Um, and then some of like the topographical things in the, at least in the United Whoa. States, like, like I have that one of Yosemite somewhere, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And then also like, maybe if they're really looking closely, they might see something about like fashion and clothing and what we, how we, you know, clothe ourselves. I love the, um, the television one, um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, Gary Winogram did those, those television images um, so Lee well. Lee, Lee was it? it was Lee Freelander, excuse me. Um, um, you know, but it, it, it's just, it's such a, a, a kind of silly thing to, um, uh, to photograph uh, the television, you know, to try to capture a moving image on a simulated image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's like a little reflection of the the lamp. Oh, yeah. Also, which is kind of creepy. And the fact that it's cheerleaders, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. It's so good. It's like, it's... <laughs> I, have, um, I have photos that my grandfather took of the... Um, I, I don't know space stuff. So whatever the one was where they went to the moon the first time. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, so I have photographs that my grandfather took of the TV uh, mm -hmm. of that launch. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have photos that he took of the launch when um, was it the Challenger, the one that blew up in 80. 86 yeah 86 yeah 86 yeah with krista mcauliffe so then i have photos that he took of that when he was actually there because he lives in florida so he drove across the state and it's interesting to see the two 
of those photos like he he couldn't get to the one in 69 and he got to the one in 86 and that's the one where <sighs> right the one that every child in america was watching because a teacher was on it so they all saw it at school yep yeah. i watched my, my, my husband my husband went to that high school and his oh. dad taught with Krista <laughs> so yeah we were all watching in new hampshire but yeah it's interesting yeah. to see like my grandfather took pictures of the tv i took i took pictures of the tv when obama won mm -hmm. oh, it's like like almost like you're participating with whatever's going on on the television mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is an interesting human weird thing to do i guess when you think about it from a perspective of an outsider if vince is going to be the alien archaeologist yeah, I know. I like the idea of the alien archaeologist. <laughs> I should have thought of that earlier. <laughs> well, I see um, a, 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 a second, a V2. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. definitely a V2 of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is all I will share so that, because I know there's other people. I yeah. so want to see your other ones, but I think we sure. have to move That's on. Super cool collection. Thank you for gathering all of those and yeah, finding them throughout the country. Yeah, it was great. It's been fun. <laughs> Brian, you plan on sharing those else? What's that? You'll have to do a sequel. I'm totally down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm next. <laughs> uh, I have two. Um, and. I um uh oh what are you saying? Wayne I need to screen this up. Hold on. All right, let's do this again. I know Wayne. Oh my god, what's my problem? There we go. Um, so I, I have one of mine and one of somebody else's. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I don't really have a lot to say. Just, I was trying to, I mean, I feel like now that I, we've been talking about this for a while and looking at stuff and just thinking more about it. I'd love to do it again. So I'm looking forward to the next one. But I also like, I feel like I, in my head, I immediately thought of this photograph I made of my nephew um, when he was nursing. Um, and then this is um, Wayne Levin, I think his name. And it's I wanted Wayne to, Levin. what? It is Wayne Levin. Um, I always, I just remember seeing his photographs and I wanted to have something that was a different kind of animal and just something incredibly beautiful and kind of abstract um, in the same way that the head shot is. So. I like how these are both not representational, that they are abstract, that to our eyes, we it invites more investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is so just to go back to the that. Yeah, that that's just a school of fish that's it is a school in a really tight formation. Yes. Wow, that's bizarre. It's amazing how they move together. Yeah. So you know, it's interesting, like the one thing we might have in, uh, in common with aliens is the idea of the spiral in the golden ratio. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I've been teaching classes where we've been focusing on composition a lot and trying to explain, you know, why the rule of thirds works. Um, you know, it has more to do with the golden ratio and spirals and, and all of that. It's because we see it in the smallest thing, like putting milk into coffee, you know, up until, you know, the Milky Way itself. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we're universally drawn to so much that I think even an alien would have to, you know, consider that. 
And they both have a spiral. Yeah. Awesome. That's oh, beautiful. You know, and a, and a very naturally occurring spiral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're both they love spirals. Love spirals. Can't get enough. Like spirals, and I love circles. I just I'm obsessed with round circle. Yeah, I feel like this will remind them of arriving to another planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's mine. Okay. I love these. They, they work so well together. I think you need to make that a diptych. <laughs> All right, I'll show them next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bring them on. Bring them on. All right, Vince, you're in. Okay. I mean up. <laughs> All right. Can you see this in full screen? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I've shown these before and um, they are taken from a group, uh, an organization in uh, San Francisco called the Friendship Banquet. And it's a community of people who, um, uh, who had done, um, uh, had been part of an AIDS hospice group and um, some of them were survivors, some were um, caregivers, um, but also it was the idea of the Friendship Banquet was just open to, to anyone. Um, and so also their friends and associates. And I thought of this archeological idea of tr you know, trying to learn by looking at, you know, like, like we do now, we you know, you, you dig up multiple they try to get multiple skeletons of, of evolution from different periods so they can compare them and see what the commonalities are and what the differences are. And, you know, looking at a series of portraits, um, you know, one sees commonalities, that's the whole point of a portrait, but one also sees differences. And, you know, that's something that we as humans celebrate is individuality um, and personal expression. And as we all know, some of our personal expression is, is, you know, something we put on, something that we wear. And some of our personal expression is something that's given to us over time. And, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's both working together. And so I was, wanted to give our alien archaeologist friends just as much to work with as I possibly could in terms of the kind of range of human experience and that combination of character that's um, that's chosen, that's you know embraced in character that's given to us externally. And since these all have, you know, the neutral background and similar lighting, so that removes some of the question of, you know, okay, are these, uh, you know, what else is going on? Is this part of a ceremony? Is this part of a, are they, you know, about to have dinner? It doesn't matter, right? Everybody is in this neutral ground so we can, again, examine them individually and find the similarities and differences. Beautiful lighting. <clears throat> Thank you. Just good old fashioned three quarter Rembrandt lighting with a soft box. So let's go backwards through. These aren't the best scans, but they're doing the job, I think, in terms of the, I, the silver is, is absolutely beautiful in this, um, and and it's what I really like is that you're kind of photographing these folks like they're famous people, um, like that. You know, you're setting kind of an elaborate portrait up for them, um, you know. But these are definitely very. 
like I don't want to say very normal people because you know they've done some extraordinary things, but they are you know probably the best representation of a lot of America you know that's been included tonight. Um, and it's also the only uh, you're the only person who's uh, had images that are just people with a blank background. Yeah, I think it'd be I think it would be useful for their archaeologists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's this set of portraits. Um, there's such a sense of dignity and personality for each one of them, even though it's on um, the same lighting and the same background, that each person seems to really stand out as an individual. And um, I think that's really um, special that you could do that. Thank you. These portrait projects are a lot of fun. And, you know, if you like taking pictures of people, having a room full of people lined up to get their picture taken is, you know, is a little bit of heaven. Um, and, and it's, you know, a nice challenge to find a way to connect with each person and put them at ease and, uh, you know, let them show their best self. Yeah, you must definitely have done that because it doesn't seem like these are take a number, sit down, snapshot. Um, they re really, they have feeling to them. I remember you showing these before and I'm really, I love seeing them again. It's a subset of much bigger set from, um, I did a similar kind of portrait sessions with five different organizations. So in total, there's probably three or 400 portraits, um, but that most of them ha haven't been scanned. Uh, so this is, these are the few kind of my go-tos that, that I've got scans of, so I can always show them, but there you go. That's my <laughs> offering for the aliens. I think it'll be useful. I, agree. I think that um, the alien spaceship would um, love this collection that we've put together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, um, you know, and, and Jenny, is there anybody else? No, that was it. I, I think like that's a perfect one to end on because it is definitely like capturing humanity and um, and that there is like something still good in all of us and you know and if you you know if you if you gave them a little write-up too I think they would be even more willing not to uh obliterate us um. <laughs> on that note I felt like that series really showed the eyes are the window of the soul and that um a lot of the focus really drew me into everybody's eyes so hopefully the aliens know to look into people's eyes to get to know them hopefully they have eyes yeah. Two of them. Do you have eyes? <laughs> yeah. Feel it out. Feel it out. <laughs> this is a, such a cool concept, Brian. I, I, you know, as you know, I was sort of struggling with interpreting it. And I think. Yeah. Yeah. Than, but, but people showed up, you know, with some really interesting interpretations. I thought it was great. Yeah. Thank you guys all so much. Uh, this was like an idea that I had had. And I originally had it as. Um, uh, kind of a, a, a much more depressing topic where it's like, you know, thinking about uh, from much more from a Trevor Paglin point of view, where it's like, you know, we have to explain uh, what humanity is once we're extinct. Um, but all of this has given me like such a, a, a hope for humanity that, you know, it, it makes it feel like, oh, no, we're not. Uh, we, we do have a chance. We do have a shot at a uh, uh, living on forever it's nice to have a little taste of that now and then i know yeah, yeah exactly it, it's been like my you know the, the first happy thing i've done in a while <laughs> <laughs> and we will eventually like hopefully one day we'll be doing this in person again mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah. yeah um well thanks again brian uh, one more thing. Uh, yes. 
just a couple of things. Uh, I uh, I do run the Walnut Creek mm-hmm. Center for uh, Community Arts, their photo forum program. Uh, we are doing it online. Um, uh, each month we do bring in a guest artist to talk about their work. Um, uh, so we do have an open slot coming up on two weeks from today. So if you're interested in showing work, uh, please let me know. I would love to have some of you guys. Uh, uh, a couple of you have uh, already done it before, uh, Nicole and Jenny, but um, uh, if anybody else is looking towards, or uh, please let me know. Cool. Yeah. That's great, Brian. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, well, yeah, thank you, everybody. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was great. Um, thank you, everybody. Just... <laughs> I mean, they've all been so great. I was thinking about it leading up to tonight. Um, and this one was just fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think we're very lucky to have each other. And um, yeah, thanks everyone keeping us going through this pandemic. Um, and great discussion tonight too. So just wonderful. Um, oh, yes. Nicole. What's next week? What's next week or next time? What's next, next time? Next time is Tuesday, March 16th, the week after next. It is the incredible Sharon Wickham. Okay. And the theme is diptychs. And we already have eight people signed up. I We might have room for one or two more because um, it's just showing one pair. Is that right? One or two pairs? One or two pairs. One or two pairs side by side or sequential or opposing each other, any way they speak to each other, any way like actually what Ronald, Ronald did today was perfect diptychs. There's so many ways to pair things. So they talk to each other. Yeah, so that one should be great. And then the very last one on March 30th, which is um, technically a month from now, um, is Artful Pets, Photographing Your Pet. And that one is also full. Um, And we'll be coming out with a new schedule um, for season seven um, very soon. Woohoo. Awesome. So, bye, everybody. Thank you for creating this space. Wonderful. Bye, Bye, everybody. Be safe. Bye. Yes. Stay healthy and safe, folks.